Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a first time watcher to this video, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, uh, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow trading colleagues if you find my U my YouTube videos uh, of use every uh, week. And it really does help the YouTube algorithm get the uh, video out there and it's a free way to support the channel and the quality content. So unlike many other uh, channels, I apply uh, fundamentals and technicals. So we apply fundamental analysis to establish really our directional bias in the market and the, and the big banks and financial institutions use fundamental analysis regardless of what is purported and reported out on uh, general uh, YouTube and, and Facebook and uh, and Instagram channels. It's all about the fundamentals first, and then we apply technical analysis uh, to time our trade entries, establish profit targets, and risk management. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you uh, pretty much proof of that concept. Anyways, let's get into the weekly uh, uh, week ahead, I should say. Uh, so let's zoom in a little bit. So flash. PMI surveys for the US, UK, Eurozone, Japan and Australia will offer a first look at the state of the global economy in June, with investors paying close attention to any signs of a persistent surge in price pressures. There are some price pressures, inflation uh, coming in. So also central banks in the UK, China um, will be deciding on the course of monetary policy. That's always important because really the central banks <clears throat> um, their monetary policy decides on the, really the valuation or how the market values um, a currency. So other important uh, releases include US final uh, first quarter GDP. And I was saying to the to the guys in my private um, uh, Discord group is that the, uh, the the first quarter data of what a final first quarter data um, isn't really um, that important in a sense. It's not really a market mover because what's already known has been known. The, the one that you really want to focus on is the is the advanced quarter two. So the first uh, quarter because there are three reports. There's the advanced, which is the first one, the preliminary or the second second estimate, and then there's the final. It's the first advanced. Um, first quarter data or second quarter data that you really want to pay attention to that is the market mover um, but the final one pretty much what's known is known durable goods uh, orders and PCE data Canada and Mexico retail sales UK and EU consumer morale and Australia retail sales so um, decent week nothing really too major apart from really um, understanding I guess the monetary policy which is probably already known by now or, or um, the rumor, um, unless the central banks really uh, uh, have a surprise in their pocket, like what the Federal Reserve did uh, earlier in the week, um, pretty much what's known is known. So let's get into the technicals now and looking at the dollar index and uh, the dollar this week has literally just gone through the roof. And this is really because uh, the Federal Reserve uh, so really surprised the market with more of their hawkish view talking about rate hikes. And if you don't know, rate hikes um, will tend to have or the, or the, uh, the effect of a potential rate hike, again, buying the rumor, will have the effect on currencies or really strengthening a currency. So the, the market is uh, has to revalue uh, the currency, for example, the dollar in this case and uh, really kind of price in what they think the, uh, the value of the dollar will be um, against other currencies if the Federal Reserve do start to hike rates. And the reason why they are hiking rates is because of you know pretty much runaway inflation at the moment i think inflation for the us is about five percent so it's it's above their two percent target not too sure what's going on with their federal um uh, average inflation target um but it's definitely a problem and so the synopsis of this is one monetary policy was unchanged uh the new federal reserve forecast signals officials are not so confident in their transitionary inflation narrative they basically were, were, were signaling that inflation was temporary but now they've had to actually talk it down it's called jawboning so they're they're really um trying to influence rather than having to cut rates or sorry i say high rates they're actually talking it talking it up um which is which is an actual thing central banks will do they will talk the currency up or down 
um, without actually maybe having to not uh, hike interest rates or cut interest rates first. So that's what they've pretty much done. With growth also revised up, the Fed are now indicating um, we should be braced for 50 basis points of rate hikes in 2023 with the prospect of an earlier QE taper that potentially has an earlier conclusion. So again, took the market really by surprise. And so on the Wednesday, this is pretty much what you saw. The market now is pricing in um, fundamentals, right? Because it's all about fundamentals first and risk sentiment, and then, you know, to choose our direction. So the Federal Reserve um, caught the market offside and you've seen you know this move here so many traders will say well why didn't this technical analysis work why didn't this supply zone work why didn't this supply zone work why did price go through the supply zones your, your technical strategy doesn't work it's not about a technical strategy solely we have to be on the right side of the market or attempt to be on the right side of the market by understanding the fundamentals and where the market, where the, where the smart money is pricing um, and putting their money in. And they don't do it via technicals, they do it via fundamentals and then they enter using technical analysis to establish their risk, right? Risk reward. So we know now that the dollar hawkish bias, yeah, there's no technical analysis level that's gonna stand in the way of fundamental analysis so now what we want to get long unfortunately there are no really demand zones unless prices really come all the way down here or they establish higher highs and higher lows right so you've got to wait for a pullback then a move higher that then becomes a new demand zone and then you're looking at a pullback into that zone and we're not necessarily trading the dollar uh, the dollar index Dollar index is just a measure of um, dollar strength against major currencies, but we look for the uh, dollar index as confluence, right? So if you see a bullish um, price action on the dollar index, then you go to one of the dollar crosses to look for obviously some bullish dollar um, uh, price action on that. And then uh, again, look, just look for the confluences. But if you do think that prices should want to turn around at some point and you want to get short um, then uh, this really is the zone again I'm not really uh, I don't really understand why you'd want to do that other than uh, just following a simple technical strategy which is quite basic and it's how traders really kind of lose money because the path of least resistance is to the upside regardless of whether this pulls back or not it's more about dollar buying and at least in the short term anyway um, so looking for some zones again nothing really on the on the for as far as confluence on the on the uh, dollar index when it comes to demand zones so um yeah we just have to wait for something if uh, we are using that as confluence don't necessarily have to but it is obviously a confluence uh, booster now moving on to the uh the, the dollar yen and again with with dollar yen we did get a bit of a pullback, matter of fact, at this area, probably some profit taking going on. Uh, but again, the path of least resistance is to the upside. So again, we've come down into this zone. Um, zoom down again, what we what we tend to do in, in, in the group is zoom down into lower time frames to look for entries. Um, but if this zone doesn't work out, right, if prices do pull back a bit deeper, because again, with the banks, they don't necessarily want to buy at highs. They want to buy for cheap. So even though there is a you know a hawkish bias, a bullish bias, it's not surprising to see prices pull back a bit more down to a, a more favourable demand zone before going higher. Because at the moment, there's lots of traders going long, right? So if there's not enough liquidity to the upside, meaning that if there's not enough um, sellers. Right, there's not enough people selling the dollar in order to facilitate buying because you need enough sell orders if everyone wants to buy. There's not enough um, sell orders above the market. There needs to be sell orders below the market, and that's where the that's where price will seek. It's called liquidity hunting. And this is where what the market will do to seek out and trigger sell orders so that they can facilitate buying right so if it's here cool if it doesn't if prices still continue to go lower then you're looking at a better buying opportunity why buy at you know 110 when you can buy at 109.40 for example exchange rates do matter um but if you do see some sort of risk off environment come into come into the market <clears throat> And the, uh, the, the yen is uh, more of a risk off currency, meaning that there's um, fear, uncertainty in the market, then you should see 
a move to the to a sustained move to the downside but for now i do think that this is probably just more profit taking than anything um at the at the highs and then we should put, uh, probably continue going higher within the next weeks and months again considering if the market believes that there are going to be uh well, the fed is going to continue on their hawkish uh, bias and potentially raise interest rates because the market may not believe the fed right the market has to believe the Fed because the market is where the money um, is 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 um, is who really pushes prices higher or lower. Um, dollar Swiss, uh, dollar Swiss. Um, I was really considering getting long. I was saying to the guys in the group around here, but I was kind of waiting for a bit of a catalyst. I didn't really get into this trade, but um, I know some of the traders that did in the group, and uh, really well done to them um, for holding on. Uh, we've got um, again supply zones being taken out new demand because new information in the market so now we've got demand zone here in fact I'm going to delete that pull this probably down here um, no in fact that's not it right there and then that's where that demand zone is there so again, just like the dollar index, unfortunately, there's really no daily demand zones until we come all the way down to the 90 uh, um, uh, cent uh, level. And I uh, don't, don't know whether we're going to do that anytime soon. So again, the only other thing to do is to look for is you look for a bearish day or a couple of bearish days and the break higher and the move comes back to that demand zone right because demand zones are higher highs and higher lows and uh, supply zones are lower highs and lower lows so that's really what you have to look for you have to wait for sometimes you have to wait for the um the the, the price to to create the zone right it's not forced trades um times where we have to wait on um on the uh, on price to tell us where demand is if prices won't pull back to where we potentially want it um looking at supply zones uh, I think at the moment we do have um, a, a decent technical supply zone, but again, uh, again, why would you want to really? Why would you really want to buy the uh, the Swiss franc here? Yes, we have had you know really kind of bullish price action, and there probably will be maybe some sort of profit taking going on at some point, but that's not where um, you know really the kind of the smart. Um, trade because it's not really you're really trying to buy value right you're trying to buy at bargain prices and supply and demand uh, in case you don't know is really where previous um, uh, value was right so this was previous value for the Swiss franc because it was because prices went to the downside this was actually seen as a bargain area for the Swiss franc the question is why is this Right at this point in time, considering the fundamentals and the sentiment, why is this now a bargain for the Swiss franc against the dollar? And the dollar has just uh, announced that they are uh, potentially hiking rates in the next uh, couple of years. And the Swiss franc, for example, uh, are nowhere near uh, hiking rates. Right. So even though there is profit taking here, and even though you might see a sell off, is that really the smart move? And this is where traders go wrong constantly in the market i see them just taking random trades and technical trades not understanding that you know uh, technical analysis isn't what drives prices anyways it's up to you of course make your own decisions and uh, good luck but for me uh, i've got a long bias on the dollar for now dollar cad um dollar cad again really similar to um uh, a lot of the other dollar pairs and you're going to see that where again no supply zones really um uh, were, were, were going to work it wasn't prices weren't seen as a bargain prices were definitely now seen as a bargain down here for the uh, for the dollar so again looking for pullbacks although um i do believe that the cad is one of the stronger um currencies so if i was looking for any kind of short trades on the dollar the, the CAD would be probably one of the uh, pairs that I would look for. It's not the best trade in the world. And in fact, I'm not even interested in trading, uh, going short on the dollar, even if it, um, even if I think I'm a buyer, I am actually a buyer of the CAD. There are easier trades to trade the CAD against, um, or easier currencies, I should say, to trade the Canadian dollar against. And the US dollar definitely isn't one of them. So, um, if you are looking for short trades, there's one. If you're looking for long trades, again, similar to, in fact, exactly the same as the 
dollar Swiss and dollar yen, you really have to wait for higher lows and higher highs to establish and then look for uh, any kind of buy trades in and around those areas um, for now, because I highly doubt that prices are gonna come back down to this one to one fifty area any time soon. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, uh, again, selling off and similar to the, um, to the CAD, I think it's one of the stronger currencies uh, um, uh, when it comes to uh, um, uh, currency appreciation. Yes, uh, the the the, uh, the dollar has uh, strengthened, but I do believe that if prices are going to turn around, then I think this zone for the for the uh, for the Australian sorry for the uh, New Zealand dollar may be one of them. Also, as well, some I think there might be a bit of confluence within this area. I think we've got some uh, some long term some long-term support and resistance there yeah so uh decent potentially right now for a potential uh reversal but again if you're buying a new zealand dollar which you are if you're going long is the uh the the, the us dollar the one you want to buy it against and uh for me not really uh, there are definitely better trades out there weaker currencies and we've got some supply right here so um so yeah but this is a decent opportunity to for for some potential long trades and again if you're looking for any kind of short trades a pull back to that zone there before looking at getting short uh pound dollar so pound dollar sold off this week just like all other currency pairs and um, against the dollar anyway and uh, we are seeing uh, we're probably going to see some potential continued downside we do have uh, supply i think that's hidden demand sorry hidden supply yes it is and uh, again you're looking for either a pullback into a zone to the underside of that zone before looking at getting short um, if you're looking for any kind of long trades buying the pound against the uh, the dollar then you're looking for any kind of buy trades pretty much now and with the uk going to some fundamental analysis uh uk inflation also jumps above the bank of england's goal and heats up debate on prices so the uk's um inflation surged unexpectedly past the bank of england's target for the first time in almost two years lifting the pound and adding to speculation about when monetary policy could be tightened tightening is just another word for a, 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 a hike in rates so so um, the central bank target is 2% and consumer prices rose 2.1% from a year earlier, the highest since July 2019. Um, and uh, economists and the Bank of England had expected an increase of 1.8. So it's more than expected. Core inflation jumped to 2%, the most since August 2018. So what that does is that puts pressure on the... Um, also puts pressure on the uh, Bank of England to potentially have to do something about rates, right? What are you gonna do about rates? Are you gonna hold or are you gonna hike rates, continue to hold? If they hold rates, then you're probably going to see um, uh, the dollar continue to strengthen. But if the pound and the Bank of England decide that they want to also be quite hawkish um, against, uh, well, say hawkish against the dollar, but just hawkish in general, and start to talk about raising rates potentially, right? Then um, you probably will see some sort of ranging market because you have two currencies uh, that are potentially hiking rates. So it's more of an even fight. When you have an uneven fight, for example, when prices, one central bank is hiking rates and another is potentially either holding or potentially cutting rates. That's when you see a trending market. That's where you see, uh, you know, markets either trend to the downside or trend to the upside because you're, it's a strong versus a weak currency. When you have two currencies that are both strong or both weak, the market has to establish a, a, a bit of a value range because um, it doesn't know where really the market should do a price, you know, price discovery in, in a sense. So um, uh, you, that's where you get a ranging market. So we could potentially on Thursday, I think it's Thursday, um, or is it Tuesday? One of those days uh, where the Bank of England are um, uh, making their speech, they're making their announcements. Uh, potentially uh, we could see uh, some more upside somewhere around or who knows really but depends on um how far prices go before the uh, the actual speech and uh, sentiment from the bank of england but again is the british pound is the dollar really the the the, the um the currency or the, the is the us dollar the currency to buy the british pound against 
um, or four, I would say probably no, there are definitely easier trades out there. So the pound dollar for me isn't necessarily a fantastic trade at all because you've got two strong currencies. I look for this, this is my ultimate scenario, strong versus weak currencies. And that's what you should really be looking for. Euro dollar. Euro dollar again. Euro, uh, no, not, not not surprising that in under these demand zones, uh, there was no value found in these demand zones because there's been a massive shift. Um, but what we do have, in fact, I should keep that one there yep yeah, because we're in that but what we do have technically is prices have come down to a decent zone and if you still want to be a buyer of the euro then this is probably your chance or probably the low of the range as you can see um uh, it was in april we did have a, a really strong you know demand zone prices went um quite a, a lot higher from there moved a good you know few hundred pips so um this potentially may be the limit of the move this this 17 1 uh, 1750 area could be the limit of this move um fundamentally though we do have uh the uh fed spurs goldman and deutsche bank to abandon the bullish view on the euro so euro sinks as much as 1.1 percent the biggest euro drop uh, since April 2020 and Goldman says hawkish Fed and tapering uh, debate are headwinds. So the Federal Reserve hawkish turn prompted both Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and Deutsche Bank AG to abandon their calls that uh, the euro will rally against the dollar. So um, again, uh, they're making their decisions based off of again fundamental analysis and monetary policy. Yeah, so the, the 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 smart money, the big money, have abandoned it for now. Again, not necessarily; it's not permanent, not set in stone. But until the um, the euro really starts to, and the ECB start to become probably more hawkish, um, it probably shorts all the way. So again, if we need to look for short trades, you're looking for lower highs and lower lows, then a pullback into what would be called a supply zone before looking at getting short. That's really how um, this works. But if you do wanna get long on the, on the euro dollar for whatever reason, then, um, you know, pretty much now and, uh, and uh, uh, the 1.175 area or the zone um, is where you'll probably be looking for. And if you do want to take your um, supply and demand uh, trading and fundamental analysis uh, to the next level, I really highly suggest that you check out the uh, supply and demand uh, uh, course that um, enrollment starts in the next 15 days, July the 5th, uh, 2021. It will be for a limited time only. I only have, really have um, enough time uh, to kind of mentor um, a limited number of students. Um, and uh, again, uh, you get access to our fundamental analysis spreadsheet where we look at really the best pairs based off of our economic data and fundamental analysis. Um, so if you do want to be a member of our group, our Discord group, um, definitely um, check this out on the 5th of July. And again, it will be open for a limited time only, probably maybe about a week or two, depending on how I feel about it and how much people we actually get. And then I will uh, I will close it for the foreseeable future. So um, so yeah, let's get back to the, uh, um, the charts and the fundamentals and moving on to the Euro Yen. So Euro Yen, um, I am pretty, I wouldn't say pretty bullish, but um, I do have a long bias on this. And what's really happened so far is that the uh, the euro has sold off due to dollar strength. They kind of work in a, in opposition, so it's taken out a few demand zones. I do think the um, the, uh, the 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 yen is probably the 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 the, the, the worst the dog the dog with the most fleas. Um, we want to trade really the dog with the least fleas. So. Um, I do think that this is just a nice, a nice, really nice pullback into a zone that I probably want to get long on um, uh, soon, but it depends on, on really what happens. In fact, that's really the way the supply zone starts. So um, let's see what happens at the moment when we're in a bit of no man's land, um, but let's see what happens if price can come down to this 130 level and establish uh, potential buyers. If there is some risk off, right, so risk off, 
sentiment does come into the market, then the yen will uh, want to strengthen. But let's see what happens, um, you know, at this zone. Again, if you do want to get short, you're either looking for a pullback all the way up to there or you're looking for lower highs and lower lows and then a pullback into that lower high. Moving on to the Aussie uh, dollar, Australian dollar, US dollar, and there is and prices have kind of pulled back to around this zone here. Quite a wide zone, you might say, um, which is fine. Yeah, in fact, I'll draw it from probably around here. Yeah. Um, so again, understanding that the Federal Reserve has literally. Uh, caused a bit of um, caught a lot of traders offside, taking out a lot of stops. Um, I do think that the market will establish um, some sort of buys as well, because again, the um, the Australian dollar is probably one of the better currencies. Uh, so, although I am again bullish on the Australian dollar, I wouldn't necessarily, and it's not financial advice, look for a buy of the Australian dollar against the US dollar because um, there is quite hawkish sentiment. But if you do, then this is a decent zone to get look for long trades. And then we also have a demand zone further down with some um, also some, some resistance turn potentially support confluence around here. So um, that the 74 area could be where prices start to turn around technically um, because again the market is just establishing where value potentially is and where potential range will be the markets won't don't necessarily fall forever and again it depends on whether they uh, believe the Fed and what happens with uh, with inflation moving on to the Aussie yen which I am bullish on and uh, we did get a bit of a sell-off which is a uh, bit surprising but welcomed I do like this because it allows me to start to want to buy uh, the Australian dollar for cheaper so let's see what happens in and around these zones we do have um, a bit of a support and resistance area within that wide supply and demand zone so we're just heading down into that now which is decent and we do have I think a lower some lower levels as well just in case all right so those are the two zones that I would be interested in um, again in a risk on environment you should have the Australian dollar should strengthen and the Japanese yen should weaken. So I'm not really scared or kind of put off. And you know, when traders say don't attempt to catch a falling knife, um, I, I I consistently uh, uh, attempt to. Um, and um, so if I do see an entry trigger um, uh, on the lower time frames, I will be looking for you know to establish some long trades as long as the narrative stays the same. So. Uh, the Australian dollar is the one to buy and the Japanese yen is a sell also as well if you do want to be a seller again you're looking for really a massive pullback into that zone there or again lower highs and lower lows to take place and then get involved in the lower high and finally gold and gold uh, selling off and this is really due to um, the um, uh, the Fed so gold heads for its biggest weekly loss in more than a year so spot bullion heads for biggest weekly loss in 15 months gold may struggle to recover quickly commerce banks uh, for its so gold uh, traded little um, traded little change headed for a weekly drop after regional Federal Reserve uh, president said high inflation may call for the US central bank to tighten its monetary policy this year. So really, I was saying I've been saying this for the few past few few weeks and months matter of fact is that gold um, is is rallying due to inflation concerns right so this is the reason why you saw this happen here because inflation was was going higher and gold is a hedge against inflation now the Federal Reserve are looking to hike interest rates right to keep a lid on inflation so if they're looking to keep a lid on inflation and they're successful with it, then gold, um, that inflation trade may potentially have run its course. And it's obviously you know, gonna be profit taking as well. Anyone who got involved anywhere around here, anywhere around here and anywhere around these demand zones, right, to the upside, 
the best thing to do after the Fed come out and say that they're hiking rates to potentially put a lid on inflation is to do what? Take profits. So there's lots of selling going on. There's lots of traders going short as well based off of um, you know what they see as the potential um, inflation trade being uh, temporarily over. And this is the reason why you're seeing this, you know, this massive move on gold. It's not because there was, you know, some sort of Bollinger Band or pivot point or Elliott Wave, you know, wave two, five, ABC nonsense. It's all to do with fundamental analysis and what monetary policy does uh, to asset classes. So um, again, we're in a demand zone, but again, the question is, is if you're looking for a buy, is do you think that the that gold is a bargain, right, at this, at this area? If you do, right, if you do think it's a bargain and it's a cheap price for gold, then look for a long, long, uh, long trade. Uh, for me, um, I'm um, in in the short term anyway. I'm probably more bullish on 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 the dollar uh, because of more more um, sentiment uh, driven. But uh, and so what that means is that I'm not looking for any kind of long uh, gold trades, any pullbacks uh, to any levels. You might not get anything on the daily, but maybe some intraday CPR zones for those that know about CPR trades and stop hunts will, uh, will definitely be able to take advantage of any kind of intraday trades that potentially happen um, uh, that are not necessarily in confluence with uh, supply or demand zones. Now. Um, I think we're in this we're in this range at the moment. Prices are ranging between this high and this low. So I do think that gold prices, if um, uh, if uh, if the dollar continues to strengthen, then we should see prices really kind of come down to this area here, and even maybe even even past that, uh, maybe the sixteen fifties and the sixteen hundred levels. Again, just depending on how. Um, the uh, the uh, the dollar, how much the dollar does uh, strengthen, and whether again the market believes that the um, uh, the Federal Reserve will hike rates. You have to keep your eye on GDP, right? GDP is another major um, uh, uh, in uh, macroeconomic indicator, as well as you know jobs and uh, and CPI, right? That's really where um, we look towards to understand what the, Fed, the the federal reserve and central banks will do in general anyways guys uh, that brings us to the end of the uh, the week hope you enjoyed the analysis until the next video take care and uh, speak to you all soon